Hi, this is David Weaver, editor and founder of FreakMag.com. I'm here today with Peter Furler of the Newsboys. Hi, Peter. How hey, are David. You? How you doing? I'm doing good. It's good to be here with you today. Yeah, cool. I've uh, been listening to Newsboys for a very long time. Right. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I've been enjoying it. <laughs> You've been ministering to me for a very long time, you and uh, DC Talk. And, yeah, cool. Uh, good band. Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Um, but, you know, you're still a band. You're still together, which is yeah, great. Yeah, 20 years, I think, this year. Wow. Like uh, yeah. uh, I started when we were three, you know. <laughs> That's what I figured. That's what I figured. But, uh, yeah, and you know, I, I was watching you at the Thrive uh, DVD where you're at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. And you were there with Michael Tate. Uh-huh. And I was seeing there's two great bands, the Newsboys and Michael Tate representing DC Talk. Uh, but you're, you should be considered for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Right. And I don't see why, because you're a Christian, sometimes, you know, they, they probably hold back because of your lyrics. Well, I, I, I don't know. I think sometimes, you know, a lot of times, you know, I think if we make music that's good enough, I think people will you know, look past, you know, whatever our, our beliefs are. And I mean that we, you know, we all believe different things and there's some bands that are out there that uh, probably haven't been nominated because, you know, they just haven't or uh, because they, you know, they, they oh, and there's others that have because they've just made great music. And uh, I feel that we really feel like we're just sort of starting, you know. And I know that sounds strange, but we really enjoy it and mm -hmm. we feel like we're just learning to write songs. And I don't think we've written any songs maybe yet that have been up to the standard is what we could write and so oh, we, we kind of like you know I mean there's yeah. always we don't get tired of um, writing music and performing it and playing we, we still feel like we got into it so young and we made so many mistakes you know and, and which you all make mistakes but I mean made them creatively and professionally and um, so it's really cool now to be still have a lot of energy still feel really passionate about music um, and be kind of in the thick of it still you know it's not mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. It's all finished, and now I really want to write songs, and no one wants to yeah. hear them. We we we're, we're a sold out show tonight, and we're making a record right now that we feel it's the best songs we've ever written. So we kind of don't look at it, yeah. you know, as who likes it or who not, or is it? We we grew up in Australia where there wasn't really Christian music. I don't know what that necessarily means. Um, it's like a Christian plumber, you know. <laughs> or it's like you're either a disciple of Jesus, and you and and what that means, you either love Jesus, and to love Jesus means. Um, you know, for me it means, and I think it's what it means for Jesus too, is that you do what he says, you know, and so that's a tough thing to do because I don't always do what Jesus says, sure. you know, sometimes I don't act that way. Um, but that's what makes, that's, that's what Jesus says, that's how you'll know, that's how the world will know that you are my disciples if you love one another like I've loved you. And so I look at Jesus and I think that's how I want to love people. Yeah. And if I can learn to do that, um, then they'll know I'm Christian, not by my music or not by... I believe music's a powerful tool, and it's a and I'm and I even use that term loosely, but I think it's um, but in the end, it's uh, I believe God gives gifts to all men, all of them, whether no matter what you believe, that gift that you have, whether it's playing guitar or writing lyrics or or music or or the arts and or or, or entertainment, that's a gift from God, and it's up to you what you do with it in this life. Now you you kept your lyrics Christian, whereas a lot of bands that go into the rock and roll. They, they, for some reason, they seem to drop the Jesus and add the you, which, right. uh, you know. Yeah, and I, I you know, I mean, I, I'm not, the, you know, there's some bands that write about you and it's beautiful lyrics and there's, you know, so I, it, it, it's, sure. I guess I don't want to make the mistake of what people make a mistake where they, they get, um, they put people in a box really easily and really quickly. They, they put, they, and, and that's the mistake. You see somebody on TV talking about Jesus, um, but then also talking about money more and talking about other things more. And then you see their private life comes out and it doesn't look like anything what you said. And so the danger you can do then is think that that's what Jesus is like. Right. And so putting people, you know, stereotypes is very dangerous. So I don't sort of, I believe there's, there's probably people out there in bands that are following Jesus and maybe their music's not... Um, it, that overt yet? I don't know. I don't. I, it's not my job to right. judge people and know right. their hearts. But I, I, you know what? There's the other side of it too. Um, not to be argumentative, but the, the other side is too. There are people that can put Jesus in the lyrics to make money. Sure. Because there's Christian radio now, and there's Christian yeah. television, and there's all these things, and yeah. and you can make money doing that too. So it's the heart that yeah. I think Jesus is looking at. I think the newsboys said it best: "With God is not a secret to be kept." Right. Um, people are trying to keep it a secret. I understand your role is different yeah. than some people's role, of course, in the crossing well, if he, over. If he, if he really hasn't, you know, it's like to, to forgive other people, you have to really realize how much you've been forgiven. Mm -hmm. And to love other people, you have to really realize how much you've been loved. And to keep God a secret, 
um, in every area of your life is maybe because he hasn't been revealed in every area mm. of your life. And I think that that's, that's why some people might, you know, and, and the Bible says that you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And right. We know that that doesn't mean you work out what it is to be saved and work out how to be saved. We can't work for our salvation. That's a gift. And, uh, but when we do receive it, we've got to start, like, how does this work now? How does my life become a light? How do I change yeah. my own life first? before I go for trying to change it. I, sure, I think, you know, course, it's like, you know, we seek first the kingdom, right? And yeah. What does that mean? That means there's this thing that started 2,000 years ago, a revolution, yeah, right? Yeah. And it started and it came on this earth yeah. and it, in the form of the flesh and the word, and it's called Jesus. And it showed us the way to go. Mm -hmm. And it didn't show us by way of sword or by um, hatred, right. but it showed us by actually love and forgiveness and repentance. And repentance is not just sort of saying you're sorry. Um, it's actually turning from yeah, it, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. that's where we sort of. And I've done that because I've repented. Sure. In my own way. Well, you, know, you shouldn't well, sorry, stop. Sorry, I should, shouldn't yeah. stop repenting. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, it's, I, maybe I, I should start. <laughs> I mean, I, I, as long as I haven't started, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, the the, the continual life. Martin Luther said that was continual life of repentance. Yeah. Uh, it's not just even though to start out it, you have to accept that you are unacceptable to God and you are yeah. unable to achieve anything. Um, but well, he's perfect. Yeah, you're not. And he's got a you're not up there. Yeah. yeah, and that's why Jesus died for us, so that we could be perfect in in clothed in Christ's flesh, as it were. We are the body of yeah. Christ. I even look at it like you know, it's like there's if God accepted me, how you know the standard I was before Jesus, then it, He wouldn't be perfect because He would it, He would be the uh, you know the incorrupt accepting something corrupt, and that makes that thing corrupt. But Obviously, us being washed in the blood of Christ, the sacrifice, um, that's what makes us um, pure in the sight of God. And, and it also gives us power to live on the earth because there is a power that's in us that we're born with that's too powerful for us. And it's, you know, when you want to do the, good, the right thing, you don't. Yeah. When you want to think the right things, you don't. But that power has to be replaced. And the only thing that can replace it is something more powerful than it. And the only thing more powerful than it is Jesus.